What if I told you the very thing that makes a Harley a Harley is also its biggest flaw? The shake, the shudder, the bone-rattling pulse beneath you. It's not a malfunction. It's a feature. It's history. It's defiance. And in the next few minutes, we're not just uncovering why Harleys vibrate. We're diving deep into the soul of a legend, exploring why riders crave that visceral connection and how this flaw became an iconic part of American culture. Forget everything you think you know about engine design, because the story of Harley's shake is far more complex and, frankly, more fascinating than any engineering textbook could ever explain. This isn't just about physics. It's about passion. It's about the open road, rebellion, and a thumping heart that beats unlike any other. So buckle up, or rather, hold on tight, because we're about to peel back the layers of an automotive mystery that's defined a brand for over a century. If you've ever wondered why that classic hog feels alive beneath you, you're about to get all the answers. And trust me, by the end of this ride, you'll not only understand the vibration, but you might just appreciate it in a way you never thought possible. For decades, automotive engineers have waged war on vibration. Quieter rides, smoother experiences, refined precision. These are the hallmarks of modern vehicle design. Yet, Harley-Davidson almost defiantly embraced the shape. It became their signature, a raw, untamed beast in an increasingly domesticated world of machinery. But why? Why didn't they just smooth it out? Was it a lack of technological prowess? A stubborn adherence to tradition? Or something far more intentional, a stroke of genius that inadvertently forged an unbreakable bond between man and machine. To truly grasp the Harley vibration, we have to travel back to the very origins of the V-twin engine. Imagine the early 20th century. Engineering was a rapidly evolving field, but still in its relative infancy compared to today. The first Harley-Davidson motorcycles, much like their contemporaries, were relatively simple machines. The very nature of a V-twin engine, particularly one with a single crank pin and a specific V-angle, creates inherent imbalances. Unlike inline engines where opposing pistons can be designed to cancel out vibrations, a V-twin, by its very architecture, is a shaker. Picture two pistons sharing a single crank pin, moving up and down in a V-shaped configuration. As one piston goes up, the other might be heading down, but because they're not perfectly opposing each other on the same plane, they generate what we call primary imbalance. This is the main culprit behind that distinctive Harley shake at idle. It's not a flaw in manufacturing. It's a fundamental characteristic of that engine design. For many early engines, this was just an accepted reality. Vehicles vibrated. It was part of the experience. But as technology advanced, other manufacturers began to find solutions. They introduced counterbalancers, rotating weights designed to offset these natural imbalances, effectively smoothing out the engine's operation. Honda, for example, mastered the art of the buttery smooth V-twin. But Harley-Davidson took a different path. For years, particularly with their iconic rigid mount engines, the ones bolted directly to the frame without rubber isolation, that vibration was transmitted directly to the rider. Every throb, every shudder, every pulse of the engine became a part of the rider's experience. It was tactile, visceral. You didn't just hear the engine, you felt it in your bones, through the handlebars, the seat, the foot pegs. This wasn't just riding a motorcycle, it was becoming one with the machine. And for a generation of riders, this raw, unfiltered connection became synonymous with freedom and authenticity. This brings us to a crucial point often misunderstood, the evolution of the Harley vibration. It wasn't static. Early Harleys, especially the knuckleheads, panheads, and shovelheads, were known for significant vibrations. These were simple, 
robust engines, and the expectation of a smooth ride simply wasn't a priority in the way it is today. Riders expected a certain rawness, a mechanical symphony that included the tactile feedback. It was part of the charm, part of the challenge, part of what made a Harley a Harley. However, as the motorcycle market evolved and competition intensified, Harley-Davidson faced a dilemma. While loyalists adored the character of the vibration, newer riders or those accustomed to Japanese bikes found it fatiguing or even off-putting. The company had to innovate without losing its soul. Enter the rubber-mounted engine. This was a game-changer. Starting with models like the Dyna and Touring lines, Harley engineers began to isolate the engine from the frame using rubber mounts. The principle is simple. The engine still vibrates, still generates that iconic primary imbalance, but the rubber acts as a buffer, absorbing much of that vibration before it reaches the rider. The result? A smoother ride at cruising speeds, less fatigue on long journeys, but crucially, that distinctive Harley shape is still very much present at idle. You still feel the engine throb when you're stopped at a light, a living, breathing beast beneath you, reminding you of its heritage. But once you hit the open road, the ride smooths out significantly. This was a brilliant compromise, preserving the iconic idle shake while making the bikes more comfortable and accessible for a wider audience. It allowed Harley to retain its identity without alienating new customers. But it's not just about engine design or mounting solutions. The perception of the Harley vibration is deeply intertwined with brand identity and rider culture. For many, the vibration is a badge of honor, a symbol of rejecting the sanitized, homogenized experience offered by other manufacturers. It's a statement. It says, I ride a machine with character, a machine that talks back, a machine that demands your attention. This isn't just transportation, it's an experience, a ritual. Think about the sound of a Harley, the potato-potato rhythm. That distinct exhaust note is a direct result of the V-twin engine's firing order and the inherent imbalance that creates the vibration. The sound and the feel are inextricably linked. They create a multi-sensory experience that is unique to Harley-Davidson. You hear it, you feel it, you live it. Now, for those of you who've been with us on this ride, appreciating the deep dive into what makes a Harley tick, if you're finding this exploration as fascinating as we are, please take a moment to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with fellow enthusiasts. Your support helps us keep bringing these in-depth stories to life and diving deeper into the machines that define our passion. We're building a community of true gearheads here, and every interaction makes a huge difference. Beyond the rubber mounts, Harley-Davidson continued to refine its engine designs. The introduction of engines like the Twin Cam and later the Milwaukee 8 saw further advancements in balancing technology. For instance, the Milwaukee 8 engine, which features four valves per cylinder and a single internal counterbalancer on certain models, offers a noticeably smoother experience at idle compared to older rigid mount V-twins. However, even with these advancements, the core character, that distinct pulse, remains. Harley hasn't eradicated the vibration. They've managed it, shaped it, and used it to their advantage. They understand that for their core demographic, a completely vibration-free Harley would simply cease to be a Harley. It would lose its essence, its raw appeal. Consider the engineering challenges. The 45-degree V-twin, while aesthetically iconic, is inherently unbalanced. Early Harley engineers faced limitations in materials, manufacturing precision, and available balancing technologies. They built robust engines that could withstand the internal forces generated by these imbalances, often relying on sheer mass and strength. The trade-off was the transmission of those forces directly to the rider. Over time, the evolution wasn't just about reducing vibration, 
but about understanding its qualities. There's a difference between a harsh, unpleasant vibration that rattles your teeth and a rhythmic, powerful pulse that feels alive. Harley-Davidson has, through decades of iteration, honed that latter quality. It's about finding the sweet spot, enough vibration to maintain the character, but not so much that it becomes unbearable or unreliable. It's also important to differentiate between primary and secondary vibrations. Primary vibrations, as we discussed, come from the basic reciprocating motion of the pistons. Secondary vibrations are higher frequency oscillations, often caused by the connecting rods and crankshaft assembly. Modern engine design, even in Harleys, aims to mitigate these higher frequency, often more irritating vibrations, while often preserving a certain level of the lower frequency primary thrum that is so characteristic. The philosophy of the Harley vibration also speaks to a broader cultural phenomenon. Harley-Davidson isn't just a motorcycle company, it's a lifestyle brand. Riders don't just buy a bike, they buy into an identity. And part of that identity is rugged individualism, a connection to mechanical things, and a rejection of overly refined, sterile experiences. The vibration, for many, symbolizes this ethos. It's a reminder that you're riding a powerful, tangible piece of machinery not a glorified appliance. Think about the aftermarket industry for Harleys. Many riders enhance the sound and feel of their bikes, sometimes even subtly reintroducing a bit more of that raw, visceral feedback through performance modifications. This isn't about making the bike smoother. It's about amplifying its character, its spirit. It shows that for a significant portion of the riding community, the vibration isn't a problem to be solved, but a sensation to be embraced. So, when you see a Harley shaking at a stoplight or feel that unmistakable throb as you twist the throttle, remember, you're experiencing over a century of engineering, culture, and pure, unadulterated passion. It's not a mistake, it's a legacy. It's the heartbeat of an American icon. It's the deliberate choice to preserve a tactile connection that other manufacturers have engineered out. It's the understanding that for some machines, a little imperfection, a little raw character, is precisely what makes them perfect. The vibration isn't just a side effect. It's part of the narrative, part of the legendary story etched into every mile, every rumble, and every unforgettable ride. It's the soul of the machine speaking to the soul of the rider.